Hello everyone, I am Prachesh Kumar. Today I am going to teach you Paradise Lost, book number 1st, lines from 1 to 26. My dear students, in my previous lecture, I have already discussed with you the background of the Paradise Lost. I also have told you some information about John Milton, the poet who has written this epic poem. And now the time has come to see, to find out what he has said in the first 26 lines. So without wasting a moment, let us begin to read the poem in between lines and find out what exactly John Milton wants to convey here in these lines. He says, Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the world in all our O, with loss of Eden till one great man restore us and regain the blissful seed. My dear students, he is talking in the very first line about a kind of disobedience. And what was this disobedience? It was the disobedience of the human beings. While discussing about the background of the poem, I told you how human beings tasted the fruit of a forbidden tree in Eden, a garden that was there in heaven. There was a tree in that garden and the fruit of that tree was not for human beings. God had not permitted human beings to taste the fruit of that tree. But just because of the temptation, that had been cast by Satan himself who had gone there discussing as a serpent. It was Eve, the first female, who tasted the fruit and then followed by her it was Adam who also tasted and just as both of them they tasted, they had committed a kind of sin. They had you know, disobeyed the orders of God and they were expelled from there. And when they had been expelled from there, they had come on earth. They had been sent to earth and with them on earth had come so many other things. It was death which had come with them, various sufferings, our problems, pains, difficulties, miseries, all these things had come with human beings on this earth with loss of Eden and on the other hand you would see that the Eden the place of human beings there in heaven was also lost till one greater man restore us and this condition remained of humanity until one greater man he took birth on earth and who was he he was Jesus Christ remember uh, whom most of the Christians they still believe that he was incarnation of God and when he took birth with his best efforts he made it possible for human beings to go heaven again and for that he had to sacrifice his life. He was crucified. He had to suffer a lot in order to regain, in order to find out that blissful seat in heaven again. Commonly Christians believe that it was Jesus Christ who enabled people to go to heaven. He enabled people to reconcile with God. He made human beings understand about their sin, about their mistakes. Those mistakes, those sins which usually caused miseries for them. And for that, as I already told you, that he had to sacrifice his life. And this is how, again, the blissful seat of heaven was restored. Sing heavenly muse that on the secret top of Oreb or of Sinai didst inspire that shepherd who first taught the chosen seed. My dear students, you try to understand that there are some words here which are very important to be understood. The first one is Oreb, second one is Sinai, then Shepherd and then the chosen seed. These are the words which we need to understand and these words will help us to understand what exactly he wants to explain here, what he exactly wants to tell us here. But before that you need to understand one very important tradition of epic writing. And that tradition is of invocation. Whenever any writer, any poet attempts to write an epic, he always or that poet always prays to gods and goddesses to help in his or her endeavor. Because it is supposed that such a lengthy and happy work cannot be completed without the help of gods and goddesses. And therefore Milton also requests, Mil Milton also prays to heavenly muse to help him in his endeavor of writing this particular epic, Paradise Lost. He says that she has inspired, this heavenly muse has inspired Moses, one of the greatest prophets of the Christianity of Judaism and of Islam, to go on the tops of these mountains, Mountain Oreb and Mountain Sinai. These are two mountains where 
prophet Moses had gone and there he received 10 commandments by God. And when he had come back, he taught those commandments to the chosen seeds. The chosen seed means the people of Israel. And he was the first person who taught them for the first time the will of God, the teachings of God, the instructions of God. Therefore, he also told those chosen people how in the beginning the heavens and earth rose out of chaos. Or if Sion held delight the more, and Siloas broke that floor fast with the oracle of God. Further John Milton tells that if Sion Hill, you try to understand, this is the hill on which the city of Jerusalem stands and that's why it is a very holy place for all Christians. Therefore John Milton tells that if this place is loved by Goddess, heavenly muse, he means then he also wants to be inspired because he also is going to tell uh, uh, stories about this place. And Siloas Brook, further he says that if Siloas Brook is lovable to you, to heavenly muse, then also he must be inspired, he must be helped and he must be motivated to write such a such an epic into which he is going to speak the stories of, he is going to tell the stories of these places. You try to understand Siloas Brook, it's a, it's a very holy place because it is also supposed to be the original site of Jerusalem and that's why most of the people they go, Christians usually go there and there is a brook brook you try to understand a very small river and that runs by the place of God that runs there by the oracle of God here oracle of God means place of God normally oracle means prophecy but here that brook which runs there in that city by the oracle of God or by the place of God if these places are very dear to heavenly muse then she must inspire John Milton she must help John Milton because he is also going to tell stories about these places which are very lovable to gods and goddesses. I then invoke thy aid to my adventurous song that with no middle flight intends to soar above the Anonian mound. Then John Milton tells that he also wants to be inspired by heavenly muse because he already has inspired so many people in the past and he is going to undertake a very important task of writing an epic. Therefore, he also wants to be supported, he also wants to be helped, he also wants to be inspired. And then he says, I then invoke thy aid. Therefore, I invoke thy aid. Therefore, I want your help in the writing of this adventurous song, in the writing of this epic that is not altogether an easy task that with no middle flight intends to soar above the Anonian Mount. And he said that his epic would not be a normal epic because his intention is to write such an epic the fame of which would go above the Anonian Mount. And you must understand that this Anonian Mount that means Anonian Mountain is not a normal simple mountain and he wants the importance of his epic would be more than the height of this Anonian Mount because he intends the fame of his epic to soar to go above this Anonian Mount. And he tells it that he is going to pursue a task that has never been attempted in any language, in any medium, whether it is a prose or rhyme. So his work would be a work of no competition. There would be no competition of his work which he is going to undertake now. Therefore, he wants support of all kind from these, you know, gods and goddesses. And chiefly thou, O Spirit. Further, he invokes Almighty God. He says, O oh God, I also request you to help me. I also pray you to help me in the writing of this epic. And he says that he wants his help knowing this thing that Almighty God, Super Soul or Holy Spirit loves more and chiefly thou, O oh Spirit, that dost prefer before all temples the upright heart in pure. And finally he prays to Holy Spirit. Finally he prays to Super Soul telling this thing that he knows that the Holy Spirit loves pure heart, loves straightforward people, loves honest heart in mind. Then you know Holy Spirit loves the temple and to such an Holy Spirit he requests to help. Because he says that his heart is also pure, his mind is also clear. Therefore, he wants help of Holy Spirit, he wants help of Super Soul, he wants help of God to write this particular epic poem. Instruct me for thou knowest, thou from the first was present. Then he seeks the instruction of Almighty God, saying that he was the first who 
was present since the starting of the universe it was he who created the universe so he knows everything and that's why john milton seeks the instruction of almighty god he wants the support and inspiration from him because he knows it very well that without the support of almighty he will not be able to complete his epic and he says that it was and that's why he says that it was you who was present it was you who spreaded your wings it was you who brooded and then it was you who made it all pregnant because because this whole universe was a formless empty void and it was you who who had created out of that void all these things on on this earth or in whole of this universe so you made it pregnant means you made all these things in this universe what in me is dark illumine what is low rage in support that to the height of this great argument then he says he request he prays to god that the darker side of his heart in mind should be illuminated his low spirit should be raised and supported because he wants to match up the level of this great argument he wants to assert the large of the of the god and he also wants to justify the ways of god to man this is very important line that has been asked in several exams as well as that may be asked in several explanation you know questions so you try to understand and here he he asserts he states the purpose of writing this whole epic he says that he wants to justify that the ways of god that means laws of god for human beings are not bad and he wants to assert this thing that the government of god the laws of god the rules of god the rules of almighty are for the welfare of all species on the earth that's why he seeks support of holy spirit as well as heavenly muse and this is how he wants to start his epic poem paradise lost my dear students here i end my lecture and i hope that you have enjoyed thank you everyone for attending